Hi, we're here at uh, Lenaro Connect in Orlando, Florida. And uh, first I'll just introduce myself. I'm Larry Wakelius, Vice President of Software and Co-Founder of Calzada. We're a server company based in Austin, Texas, and we're innovating on technology that's been pervasive in mobile devices and now taking that to the server space. Um, and I'm Jason DeRose, I'm the lead developer for NobleCut and the co-founder. And um, we're de developing a distributed editing platform so um, where artists can work uh, in geographically distributed teams, pretty similar to how open source has been developed. Um, and uh, one of our, our biggest cost considerations is storage. Um, so, you know, what ARM has going on is really interesting to us because um, all we need is the force power to keep the, the network connection saturated, which these days um, isn't really that much. And that's a great fit for where Calzada is focused because um, the core of ARM has been incredibly prevalent in mobile devices, over 90% of every device today. And we're the first company that's put true server quality I.O. around that core. So we look at things like high-end um, I.O. access to drives and storage that are important, um, as well as how to scale out. So we can actually connect up to 4,000 of our nodes together in a single cluster. Um, without any cables and without any um, extra external chipsets to make that incredibly efficient both from a power standpoint and our systems take less than 90% or take out 90% of the power that you need in today's volume servers um, and actually take up 90% less space um, all for about half the cost both from a um, cost of purchase but also cost of operation. So that's the kind of infrastructure that we really look at. Can you talk a little bit more about from a software infrastructure and, and platform that is important for you guys? Yeah, so um, our storage solution stores all the file metadata in CouchDB, and then the actual files are just um, you know on regular file system, the XD4. Um, but one thing kind of unique about our approach is we ID the files by hash, and that's the only way you address them. So um, it makes it, uh, you know, you can partition it into um, partitions that don't need to communicate at all. So rather than um, something like, say, OpenStack Swift has a more centralized approach, which does give you the flexibility of you know, associating an arbitrary key with the file, which in you know, many use cases is very important. But for um, the video data, as you're really treating it all as read-only anyway, you, know, you want, want non-destructive editing just always. Um, it's a really good fit, and it, it simplifies things a lot. So you know we can we could partition our our storage volume into you know half a million partitions that don't need to communi communicate at all, and we're going to route the requests um, to DNS. So the you know the the lookup in the partitions actually is happening on the client side. So it's a it's a great fit for um, you know our processors where. We don't have an architecture that gets like a, a centralized hotspot. So, and you mentioned OpenStack. We've been uh, working with OpenStack here for over a year, and now uh, OpenStack generally supports multi-architecture systems. So, ARM is one of the core uh, foundations that OpenStack is being built on. Um, Couchbase is another company that's a partner with us in what we call our Trailblazer software program. So, being the first. ARM-based server company, we've done a lot of work to enable both direct software ISVs, but also open source partners like Canonical with Ubuntu, like the work that Lenaro is doing in the Linux kernel. Um, so we see that as a way to just keep making it easier uh, for companies to build on that and, and scale out. Where do you see the cloud usage going longer term? Um, so our other workload is rendering. So um, if, if two artists are working together, and say so we have all the master files um, in our cloud storage, then we'd like to be able to do very quick renders for them. Um, and it, you know that's a place where it's, it's arms kind of in a, in a transition point where maybe right now it's not quite a fit, but um, you know again as long as you can break the piece into uh, the rendering into small workloads, they can do it in parallel, which video does lend, lend itself pretty well, at least for the final rendering. You know for for the real time. Um, uh, preview rendering you're doing for the user, that's a little harder problem to break up like that. But for final rendering, there's no reason you can't chop it up into a thousand pieces. Or, so. And I think that 
as ARM establishes itself more and more in the server space, um, today we're starting with very open standard type systems. So being able to run hybrid type environments, combining maybe more high-end compute with scale-out systems like Helzeta brings to market, it's a great fit. And those are application spaces that will grow into over time, but I think it enables you to start from a much more power-efficient platform and build on that over time. Right. Right. And, and I think long term, I mean, storage is probably our biggest, you know, cost sensitive area. Um, because in terms of you know, distributing these files, we want a lot of uh, you know, physical presences at edge locations and um, a place where the, you know, the, the Winky servers mm -hmm. are, are, are perfect because right. you know, all you do is keep that network connection saturated. And, right. and there are designs in that environment where you have a full server design with no moving parts if you choose to use um, SSD drives as well. So envision right. a server with um, at a um, thermal threshold where you don't need fans and um, no spinning drives, just using SSD, especially as you think about edge type servers, it's a huge benefit, um, both power, cost, but also from a serviceability and supportability. Uh, yeah. So you said the Calzada system can have 4,000 nodes? We can do 4,000 nodes in a cluster. Um, we've got a fabric that interconnects node to node. Um, done in an open standards way such that we use standard drivers and standard um, software applications on top of that. And so the beauty is we've built that into um, our SOC implementation and takes away the cost of cabling, um, the space and power demands that you would have with a typical Ethernet um, connected environment, but at the same time you're able to run all your existing software on top of that. So does each node have its own OS instance running on Each node is, a, is an instance in the cluster um, supporting um, existing Linux distributions um, like Ubuntu and Fedora uh, and open source kernel that uh, with bits already available upstream. So it makes it very easy and we also support out-of-band management. So things like IPMI um, that enterprise servers are used to today in um, standard environments that um, high-end data centers and hyperscale data centers are used to. That's all included in the package. So it makes um, not just installation easy, but deployment, uh, provisioning, and updating. Oh, that's really exciting. So we've really looked at it from a full server and system perspective rather than just thinking only about the, the core itself. So really looking at this as a full server solution, um, building on what a lot of um, work that's happened in the ecosystem, both from a hardware standpoint and software. Right. So you would take one of these, like I, I know I've read a bit about the, the 120 node um, mm -hmm. 2U system. That's right. So I mean that would be you know, potentially replacing a, a whole rack of... That's right. So we, we uh, have comparisons that basically show, um, as I mentioned, you can take out 90% of the space, um, yeah. equivalent performance, and half the cost. Uh, so it's a dramatic change, and data centers today um, are being built in odd places just to save power and cooling. Um, whether it's next to a river or in uh, northern Europe, leaving the windows open, or um, everybody's going through some odd gyrations just to, to deal with that problem. And we're really the first company that's gone to the root of the problem, and that's minimizing the actual heat that's created and the power that's required to run the server. Yeah. Well, in eliminating all the you know networking and the kind of heavy duty switching, um, uh, that's I didn't quite realize that that uh, is part of part of what you're conquering. So yeah, that's, that's it, fantastic. It's a great amount of integration that um, limits the number of chipsets. In fact, there are no chipsets that are required, um, mm -hmm. and also even at a board level design for OEMs, um, and all at the same time using standard Linux distributions. So. Um, our software partners will continue to grow and, and we've done a lot in open source community for the application side as well. Application sets like um, in the big data space, Hadoop's a great example for analytics right. um, where there's tremendous growth in hyperscale servers today. Uh, and that's a perfect fit because it's more about I.O. movement than it is about compute right. um, and heavy duty analysis. So does each node then have its own I.O.? Or? It does. So each node can support up to five SATA drives. Wow. Um, also has uh, PCIe support. Um, has a kind of band management that I talked about, as well as our both our internal fabric, but it also supports both 1 and 10 gig Ethernet. 
um, some very big uh, pipes going in and out of uh, potentially every single node, just a matter of how um, you choose to design your system. Hmm. So we're excited and uh, great for, for guys like you as, as you're expanding out and taking advantage both of the technology but also from a, from a business value standpoint. Right, right. Well, and, and we got started with this part of um, kind of our strategic assessment was looking at, you know, we had a strong hunch that ARM would be moving into servers and right around the time that we would be needing to really look at that. And so, it, you know, we would be right at that point when um, a lot of competitors probably had already deployed lots of infrastructure um, and we could deploy something cheaper you know, across the board. So. Right. And it's all about a matter of timing because uh, if you look at the server industry, uh, 30 years ago, the IBM PC really revolutionized the desktop, but what also happened was people started to take that technology and put it into servers in an area that had always been very custom development. So this is really the next innovation, um, and rather than taking from the desktop, we're taking from the mobile side. Right. Um, so that ecosystem and that baseline that we can leverage off of, we're able to move incredibly quickly for um, as early as we are, both in this industry, but also for Kelsey as a company. Mm-hmm.